welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at how to add test coverage to a legacy code base which was not initially designed with testability or the solid principles in mind. In this episode we're going to look how we can use manual mocks to allow us to test some code that's inherently not very testable uh, for many reasons, but probably the main reason is because of its use of reflection. This is a code base that is a few years old. It basically its job is to consume an object, find start and stop methods on an object, and call them. And this is basically a plug-in manager, service manager, uh, that I'd like to make some changes to. But it's fairly old and wasn't really designed with testability, has absolutely no test. In our episode, we're going to focus on adding some tests to the run and stop methods. These are basically the start and stop functionalities for the core library. So let me just give you a quick tour of the code. Service takes a constructor where you pass in your object. This is the object that needs to implement the start and stop. And by the way, we'll find start and stop by looking at looking for attributes. Run is the method that basically will kick off that service. We'll we'll call invoke start. Invoke start basically will take their passed in object that we put in our constructor, find the method that has start on it, assuming that it's found, we'll try to invoke it. Now we expect start and stop to have no parameters. So if it does successfully start or invoke, we'll be fine. If it doesn't, we'll we'll get an unhandled or a target invocation exception, we'll pass back or throw back an unable to start service exception. And we do pretty much the exact same thing for a stop. We want to add some test coverage around this today, basically to ensure that when I call start with an appropriate uh, service plugin, that everything works as expected. Now, I've already got a service uh, test harness set up here. The first thing I want to do is I want to create a test stub. And we're going to call this run, ensure that. So basically, ensure that when we provide a valid object, start happens. What do we need to do this? Well, first I want to create an instance of my new service. Service takes an overload, and this is going to be my service. We'll, we'll create my service in a minute. We want to call service run, and we'll give it a service result. Let's go ahead and create our service result. Now, when run is called, it'll actually introduce you know a variable, and it will it will give me the run status. We'll just call it status. We want to assert the status is true, and this is the simplest part of my test. Now, what I need to do is actually figure out how to create my mock for my test, because as you can see right here. I have a my service that has not been created yet, which means this test won't even compile, let alone run successfully. So what we want to do is we want to create a mock of our service. We're not using any mocking frameworks here. We're just going to do a manual mock. We'll call this mock i service. To save some time here, instead of typing in the entire mock i service class, I'm going to go ahead and paste it in. Now, my mock i service implements an i service interface. Why is that important? Because when I define a plugin, I want to provide it the i service interface. It also just gives me an easy um, way to get some other value later. Because if I want to test the rest of my logic within that service uh, class. I would need iService objects, and this will give me the dual functionality. What I'm interested in this for this test is the start and stop. In order for the plugin to work, you just simply need to have an attribute called service start or service start stop, and that's what we're looking for via reflection. In a real scenario, the start or stop method would actually perform some logic. In our scenario here with our mock, I don't want to perform logic. I just want to ensure that it was actually called or not called. So what I've done here is I've created a couple auto properties, and I've set them to false in my constructor, and they'll be set to true if the start or stop method is called. And this will allow me to assert that they were called correctly. 
So now that I've created my mock, let's go back to my test. Let's create an instance of my iMock service. And now that I've created my mock, I'm essentially ready to go. But before I start my unit test, let's actually add one more assert. And that's to actually insert that start was actually called as expected. So now that we've got our test completely set up, let's put a breakpoint right here and run this. So I've hit my breakpoint with F11 in this. Let's go into invoke start. Let's hope it found the method, and sure enough it did. So now here's a moment of truth. If I F11 into the invoke, will I get into my start? And yes, I will. So start has been called. Is going to be set to true. That's great. No exceptions thrown. I can return back to my unit test now. Run it and my test successfully passes. I have now created a unit test for the starting of my service by using a manual mock. Now I've only tested one of my pathways here. I've only tested that it actually can find the start method and its signature is valid. What if I wanted to test that it wasn't valid signature? For that all I would do is I'm going to create another mock. I'm going to call it invalid, invalid signature for start. And for start to make it invalid, I'm just going to provide it anything. And that should mark it as invalid. And if I go back to my unit test, create a copy of it, ensure that when we provide a invalid object, start throws start throws an exception. Because if you remember coming back here, we expect it to throw a target invocation exception, which means we're going to throw our unable to start service exception. So we're going to set our test up to basically expect that the unable to start service exception is called. Now I need to make one slight change here. Change my mock I'm using. And if I run this, Put a breakpoint right here first. So I've hit my breakpoint. If I hit F5, go check my test result. And sure enough, everything succeeded as expected. So what we've taken a look at here is how we can take some code that clearly is not test friendly. Anytime you're doing, re dealing with reflection, it's not real easy to test. And this is just one way to add test coverage, by the way. There's many other different ways to do it, but we wanted to focus in this episode on how to use and utilize manual mocks versus a mocking framework. Could you have done the mocking framework? Yes, you could have. Could you have done it easier, more, you know, more uh, difficultly? Who knows? That's a per matter of personal opinion. But this is a way you can do it using manual mocks. So the next time you run into a scenario where you have some code base that doesn't look inherently testable to begin with, remember, there's always a way to test. There's always a way to back in unit tests to legacy code. It's just a matter of understanding the intent of the code and understanding how you can remove some of its dependencies or abstractions in order to test successfully. So hope you learned something. Until next time. Mm -hmm.